Hello, welcome to uh, Wikis on the Public Sector number three. My name is Damien, Damien Finol. I'm from originally from Venezuela, and I'll be talking about getting elected thanks to Wikipedia, how social networks influence politics, politicians, and voters, okay? Um, I'll be doing part of my presentation sitting down. Well, no, let me see if I can actually do it standing up and handling this with just one hand. Uh, that's my content information. If you guys need to send me any questions, comments, or anything like that, I'm free and available. You guys can shoot me an email if you guys want. I don't, I don't mind. I'll, when I get any moment of my spare time to answer you guys, I'll be sure to do it. So first half of this uh, presentation is going to be about Twitter and how Twitter influences politics and politicians and voters and heads of state and all that. And the other half will be about a case in Venezuela where Wikipedia was used to run a smear campaign and actually win an election. Um, so all right, first of all, let's play a little number game about Twitter. These are the number of leaders currently on Twitter. Seven out of eight of the, I'm just gonna grab this. I think I'm better just walking and talking. It. Seven out of eight are of, of, of the leaders of the GH are on Twitter, We're talking about like Germany, the US, Canada, and all those countries in the um, group of eight. 16 out of 20 are G20 leaders, and 20 out of the 27 European countries, uh, heads of state also run on Twitter. This is part of, the, since three years ago, four years ago to here. Uh, on the election day 2008 here in the US, over 1.8 million tweets were about the event in 2008. And back then in 2008, uh, Twitter was, I think it's been, hello? Okay. Twitter was still being born. It wasn't a uh, platform that it is right now with uh, millions and millions of users and having the impact that it has right now. But even then, in 2008, it had over 1.8 million tweets about that event during that day, about that election. So if you guys fast forward four years, that number is pretty much going to skyrocket this year. Number of politicians using Twitter. 485 Japanese politicians have Twitter accounts, and they actively use it. In Germany, 577 uh, politicians use it, from deputies, from congressmen, from the head of state and all that. In Venezuela, 243. For a country that has real uh, issues with access to the internet, 243 users, uh, um, sorry, 243 politicians use Twitter. And the president of Venezuela, you guys know Hugo Chavez, he has three million followers in his account, which is a lot, especially if you count that a lot of Venezuelans don't have access to, uh, to the internet. Chile, all the members of the ministries and the president all have Twitter, and they all follow each other. And I talk about they all follow each other because um, there are cases where some politicians don't follow uh, other politicians. For example, Barack Obama doesn't follow uh, the president of Brazil, Dilma, in Brazil. They don't follow each other, but she follows him. And there are other twit, I, I, I want to call it twitplomacy, and I'm going to talk about it in a, in a little slide, but it's still kind of funny to see how some politicians actually exchange and heads of state exchange tweets among themselves, coordinating and saying, hey, hello, and, and stuff like that. So here's the thing. Successful usage, and I'm pretty sure you guys know about this, successful usage of Twitter increases confidence on candidates. They see uh, Twitter as a tool that it can get across a message to their electorate, the uh, people abroad, in, even their own constituents. Um, and they see it as a tool for increasing confidence because they are liable for what they say on Twitter. It's not that just somebody else said it for them, their press secretary or something. <clears throat> if I have a Twitter account called Damien and I say, I think the sky is blue, then you know, I'm asserting that the sky is blue and my electors, the people in there are gonna say, okay, he's saying that. It's not just some press release that, got, that went out, that wasn't it, that wasn't him. No, it's, it was really me. Um, is a way, it's a really cheap way to get messages across, and not just uh, things that, 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 that you want to say to them, but also receiving feedback from them and actually feeling those questions, those comments, and even polishing up it pieces. It's very cheap, it's a very cheap way to get across, and you know what? You're not gonna spend a lot of money um, 
using uh, ads on newspapers and all that, which we know uh, really takes a huge chunk of the money from politicians when they do a fundraiser. They have to set apart some money for you know TV ads and newspaper ads and all that. Twitter is just a tweet, 140 characters or less, that can actually link to a Facebook page or a, uh, a website. I found that a mixed approach to handle a Twitter account for a politician is the best one is to use a mixed approach, which is um, if it's run only by the candidate. I mean, if the candidate is the only one, or the politician is the only one who has access to his account, and he's the only one who's sending the tweets, uh, the, the, the good thing is he can, he can really engage in conversation with the people who tweet about him or who tweet to him. But the bad thing is, if he's a really busy, tight schedule, uh, that account might be in, inactive for a while. You know, uh, If he only has time to tweet once a week, then a lot of followers will be like, where is he? Where is he? Whereas in the other side of the uh, equation, if it's only run by aides or staff, it will be seen that it doesn't have that personal touch. It will be seen like it's being run by somebody else, and like I just said a few minutes ago, that it's just a Twitter account to show information about the candidate. It's not something really personal. So a mixed approach is best if you're gonna run a, um, a Twitter account for a politician or an elected official. Have them sometimes field questions by themselves, answer comments and all that, but the other rest of the times have staff or aides actually sending those tweets uh, that need to be sent across. However, you need to be careful with what you tweet. After the Fukushima incident in Japan, the Prime Minister of Japan tweeted to avoid exposure to rain. You guys think what happened when it started raining in Japan? In, in, in zones that weren't close to the Fukushima, people got into panic. You know, My Prime Minister said, avoid exposure to rain. When it started raining, people will stay indoors. And it was like a catastrophe. It was like, hey, no, I meant you know, avoid exposure to rains in zones that are close to the Fukushima incident. Never use Twitter to have fights with people, even their opponents. Never really, we've seen that happen. I've seen it happen. Presidents actually getting into fights and arguments with, with the people, with their constituents, with their electorate, with their citizens, and it just, it never goes right. It never goes right. Don't do it. Don't ever delete a tweet. The barber strikes an effect. We've seen it. We've seen a politician or a um, governor or somewhere saying, Oh, makes a mistake or something, and they delete the tweet, or they have an opinion that they then take it back. Don't delete the tweet. It's gonna make it really. It's gonna make it really worse. Watson Twitter will come back to bite you. Do I have to say no to slurs or any slurs? I don't think I have to. Although some politicians in, in here in the U.S. have actually said ethnic slurs on on Twitter. Don't make promises that you can't keep. They'll be there forever, lingering ghosts of your failures. If you say you're gonna accomplish a reduction of the budget deficit by 5%, be sure you do it. Or be sure to actually explain why you couldn't do it. But if you just ignore it, people will come back to the history of Twitter because they can actually see the whole list and say, hey, you said two years ago that you would do it. And there's a case in Venezuela where a, uh, a minister said that she was gonna clean up a very polluted river four years ago, and she didn't. And now she's taking it back because people started saying, hey, you say four years ago on your Twitter account that you're gonna do it and you haven't done it, where is it? You know, until she had to say, well, you know, I was exaggerating. At least she didn't delete it. <laughs> Careful what you share on a personal level. Some degree of personal life is okay and pretty much encouraged, but don't overdo it. If, if, you have, if you're sending a picture of you with your family and your dog, that, that's okay, that's good, but don't overdo it. People don't wanna see what you're gonna wear every single day and actually go people like, hey, why are you oversharing? If you make a mistake, the sooner you know up to it by admitting it and not leading to it, the better. And that just goes with what you said a few minutes ago. Just, if you make a mistake, go ahead on the record on Twitter saying, hey, I made a mistake, uh, this is what I wanted to do, uh, but this is what I got. Um, don't delete the previous tweets because there are also history. Uh, there's an archive that, that saves those tweets. Don't do direct messaging. This is really important. Sometimes direct messages can escape into the timeline or by mistake or incidentally. If you get hacked, and we've also seen, uh, and pretty much you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys see news about some politicians getting their Twitter account hacked and then on their direct messages they have pictures of them in risque poses. You guys haven't? Okay. 
don't do direct messages. If for some reason you need to have some conversation with a, a, a constituent and electorate, send them through the direct message an email address or a phone they can call, but do not engage in conversations with them through direct messages. Sometimes we've even seen that by mistake, they, instead of writing D uh, space in the name of the person, they don't or put a uh, space in, um, in front of it, and it just escapes into the timeline what you were trying to say. So don't do direct messages. Just remember, don't drink and tweet. It's a Twitter law. A really tiny 140 character law. <laughs> so um, for the next part, I'm going to talk about, um, about a situation that happened in Venezuela with, the, with Wikipedia and how it impacted an election cycle in it. The Venezuelan mayor primaries in 2012, this was a few months ago. Um, there was a, there were candidates who had teams working on their Twitter accounts and their Wikipedia profiles. And I'm gonna insert here the major candidate story. Last year, I'm right now living here in the US, but last year I was still living in Venezuela and I had a, Actually, a congressman to the Venezuelan Congress called me because I was uh, I was in the board of Wikimedia Venezuela, and he was asking me questions about Wikipedia and if if I could meet with him and all that. And I was like, yeah, sure, let's meet. So when we meet, he tells me that there was a campaign going on on his Wikipedia page from other opponents that they were trying to smear his campaign. So I started like checking it out, and not only was a smear campaign going on, but it was also the other way around. They were trying to tell him that, you know, put on his on his Wikipedia page that he was the best thing after a sliced bread. So I was just started working with him and checking here all the all the information that was going on. And I saw things like after he was a great champion of the people, and then it will be reverted, and then his opponents will put things like he was working for the communists, and now he doesn't, but he's a wishy-washy that doesn't have a fixed political stance. And it was just a, a, a reverse um, war that was going on in that article. But let me talk to you about what happened. This, these, this is the demography of the district. This is the ages uh, from infant, uh, from infant and adolescent fr to 18, and then all the way up to 65. So, if you can see, 66.6% .6 of that of his district, of the one he was running for mayor, uh, was mainly young people or people un up until their 60s. Um, he had the highest number of Venezuelans with access to the internet. Uh, in the country per person, uh, is the, uh, it's a district that has a lot of access, including uh, fiber optic and all that. So a lot of people in that district w had access to internet. Uh, and four of the biggest universities in the country were located in that district, which meant there was a lot of young people, a lot of college students and all that in that district. So what do you guys think had happened? A lot of, a lot of the... Um, a lot of the students went online to check on his profile, and in fact, his opponent platform was, if you don't know who he is, search for him. He was actually telling their students, he was actually telling the people in that district to go ahead and go look on Google or Wikipedia or anything about his profile, about the other guy's profile. Of course, he had a team working to smear his, um, his Wikipedia article. And the results were as follows. He lost by 739 votes. It was uh, out of a universe of 112,000 uh, voters in that district, uh, our candidate, the one who was a victim of the smear campaign, lost by 739 votes. Okay, so it was really, really, a really close race. Uh, was it related to Wikipedia? Well, it might be really hard to measure the exact impact that, that it had. Hello, what's going on? Uh, sorry, is the uh, internet in here? Okay, it might really hard to measure it. However, we can say that if you run a Google search for him, Wikipedia in Spanish, this is the article about him in Wikipedia Spanish, with the very first link that will come up. Not, not his party or not his own website. It was the Wikipedia uh, page of him. Um, well, Wikipedia is in the top 10 most visited websites in, in the country. 
And like I said, his opponent will use a search for his history if you don't know who he is. Look, go look it up. He has a background. He has skeletons in his closet. Go look it up. It's all online. It's all online. Go ahead and look it up. Okay? So uh, coming from that, I will say that things you should know by now is that, well, you know, Wikipedia is not a primary source of information, and it adheres to a neutral point of view, and that all information must be probably verified by verifiable sources. In this case, you know, news, content from respectable magazines and newspapers, books regarding the subject, video and audio from reliable sources, including but not limited to press releases. This is pretty much like Wikipedia 101. Uh, no rumors, gossip, hearsay, tabloid sourcing. A lot of the things they were putting on his page as smear came from tabloids, came from rumors and hearsays and all that. Fortunately, when he told me about it, it was kind of a late for it, but when he told me about it, uh, I contacted some admins in Spanish Wikipedia and they put a block in it, they reversed it, they put a, a special block on the page so it couldn't be edited further because it was, if you look at the history of it, it, it had many reverse to vandalism, especially because it was, you know, their opponents were trying to smear him. So questionable contents from sources you know, for having an agenda, political party websites, they're gonna say he's the best thing ever or the worst thing ever, uh, and associations working towards a uh, specific goal. More things. And well, of course, content should always follow policies such as the biography of a living person. They should be, it should be gritting in a responsible, neutral tone. References of the person saying is the best thing after his life's bread should be avoided. Uh, critique is allowed up to a point and categories are usually justified from the content of the article. Uh, if the person hasn't said, hey, I'm a communist, you cannot put a category communist. If they say, I'm a capitalist, you cannot put that category in there. There's got to be some reliable source that can tell you, hey, this person said in this press release that he's this or he's that. That's when you actually put the category in it. And it should also not violate policies like self-promotion, conflict of interest, autobiography, et cetera. Lastly, just because you change your mind in the subject doesn't mean the article will follow. If you had a proof broccoli stance, well documented in newspapers, and magazines, and declarations, I love broccoli, and then you suddenly realize broccoli is evil, of course it's evil, nobody likes broccoli. <laughs> the information regarding what you said will still remain in the article. It will say his previous stance on broccoli was this, 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 this. Doesn't mean they'll, they'll be deleted or anything like that. And that's a mistake a lot of um, aides and staff and politicians make when they go to a Wikipedia page. They think just because they change their mind, they can just delete it off the page. It's not like that. It doesn't work like that. It was information and it, you change your stance, that's it. Don't, do the, don't, don't, don't start the Barber's rice in effect again, you know? Um, and then don't get into edit words. If you think an article is being subject to a smear campaign, if, if, if your um, candidate or anything is being subject to one or you suspect one, contact an admin. They will check the article for a uh, neutral point of view, verifi uh, verifiability, sorry. Thank you, Spanish is my main language. Um, and they will check it, they'll run through it and might reverse any of the changes and put a block on it, okay? So I'll leave you with this. And I don't know if you guys have any questions on, on the subject, on the experience. <laughs> any questions around? Because I got like one minute left. <laughs> oh, okay, 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 okay. I'm sorry. I, I'm Yeah, um, a lot of them, that's one of the defenses they say, you know, oh, I was hacked, uh, I didn't know about this, I was hacked, some hacker, some evil hacker um, stole my credentials and they were the ones who deleted the tweet or the Wikipedia, it wasn't me, it wasn't me, it really wasn't me. But uh, people don't actually buy that. It's just, and you know, I don't know if Italy will it'll work, but in Venezuela it actually happened and it was like, Come on, no, <laughs> we're not gonna, we're not gonna believe that. Just curiosity, were you voting for the losing candidate or for the winning candidate? That wasn't my district. <laughs> that wasn't my district. That wasn't my district. But um, I remember after after the election, he actually called me again and said he was gonna sue the foundation and blah blah blah. And it was like, okay, well, 
you can exercise this, you can send a ticket to a TRS, whatever, and this and this and this. He actually didn't do any of that because I was presenting him with the facts of what to do and what not to do on a Wikipedia article about uh, politicians. Actually, actually, what we done in Wikipedia, we got you know, some Lego threads from kind of six years, seven, and eight. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not, it's not something new, but um, that's then, and actually, what we got those threads many years ago, and that's why the um, policy of biography of living persons came around. Yes. Well, if you really take a look at the policy of uh, biography of living persons, if a uh, content could be defamatory, it doesn't even go to the discussion page. It just gets deleted. Um, however, uh, I've seen discussions on candidates' uh, talks, uh, discussion pages, and one of the things that are, if, if you really are in a position where you really need to take care of that article for some reason, don't get into really uh, discussions on flame wars or anything like that, just really have your sources because the sources, especially if they're primary sources, they will make your case for you. And any admin and all that that actually sees them will uh, exercise their functions as to either reverse it, block it, or something like that, and actually clean it up of anything that actually reeks as, as a smear campaign on your on your candidate. And actually, that's what we did with these candidates. Uh, we contacted the admins in Spanish Wikipedia and told them, uh, this is being posted. You can see it on the history. Uh, actually, this is not from any reliable source. This is coming from other sources that are tabloid, that are hearsay. Uh, and this is actually what it's not right, but it, this is actually what it comes from a primary source. And they took uh, actions based from that. So any other questions that we have? Yes. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. Ha I didn't get the chance to talk to the other candidate because we didn't know it was the other candidate, and they never said it was us. However, you know there are ways of scanning and looking up who or where is coming from, and uh, one of the things that it was from them. Yes. There you go. <laughs> what I'm gonna say about this case is, in Venezuela we have uh, the opponents and the officialists, let's sort of speak. The smear campaign didn't come from the other side of the spectrum. It came within the opposition. It was the other party in the opposition that was actually doing the smear campaign. Because this is a district that uh, is has voted against the, the government for many years. So it's kind of like a, like the golden hen of the, with the golden eggs. It's just a way for opposition to actually win a district. But now the fight is between them. And that's why we found out that it, was, it wasn't the officialists and they were trying to pinpoint to the officialists. It was actually them in the other party in the opposition. I think I have one more question. Anyone has any other questions? If not, you guys can also send me an email. I think I gave it to you on the first slide. It's Damien at wikimedia.org.ve. Got a question? Yeah. They didn't exchange fire directly, either for, through Twitter or anything like that, but they did exchange fire indirectly. They were saying, oh, we're, we're being subject to uh, campaign to try to discredit who I am by other forces in the opposition, but they never really put a name on who it was or anything. They just try to remain civil, which was really good, even though we had all the proof that you know they, they we could have used to say, hey, they, they, these are the guys who are doing it. So, so yeah, I think I don't have any more time. So.
Thank you so much. Um, Okay, thank you for having me here today. Um, it's, I've been here since Tuesday. My name is Pete Ashdown. And I've been here since Tuesday. And um, one of the things that kind of surprised me about the way Wikimania works, this is my first Wikimania, I hope it won't be my last, is uh, the way people talk about being an editor. Um, I've had an, I have to say I've had an account on Wikipedia since um, about 2005. Uh, aside from a, a burst of initial activity, um, it's pretty much uh, correcting spelling mistakes and typos and, and dead links for me. Um, but I, I so much admire the work that you all do. Um, I'm going to start off with the timeline. In um, 1988, uh, I first got associated with the internet with a UUCP node on a internet on a Amiga 1000, uh, 512K, uh, two disk drives. Um, in 1988, I also started studying computer science at the University of Utah. In 1993, I started Utah's first internet service provider, a company called Xmission, which is something I still do today. And um, over the course of time, government became more and more aware of the internet, and in a copyright committee meeting, Senator Hatch, who is the senator from my state, Utah, uh, made the comment about automatically disabling computers that violate copyright. Now, when he did that, um, I was outraged on a number of levels. Um, the first was that I found it not only technically ignorant, um, but legally ignorant. You know, normally in this country, we're innocent until proven guilty. And it also uh, drew my ire because he was representing Utah, my state, as also being technically ignorant. Um, Utah has a very rich technical history. The University of Utah was one of the first four nodes on the internet. Um, computer graphics came out of Utah. Um, people uh, like the individuals who started Adobe came out of Utah. Um, we have a very rich technical history, and I think that should be represented. Uh, in 2005 and 2006, I decided to run for Senate. That was when S uh, Senator Hatch came back up for election. And in uh, 2011, I decided to run again for U.S. Senate because I didn't win in 2006. Um, in 2012, March, I submitted for Wikipedia. And the thing you have to know about Utah is we're still on what's called the convention system. The convention system is uh, done still by a handful of states where it's not direct democracy, it's representative democracy. And in 2012, April 22nd, I lost in the Utah Democratic Convention. Thank you. Um, and then, in, on April 29th, I got accepted to Wik <laughs> Wikimania. <laughs> so let me talk a little bit more about 2005, 2006, because that's really where my activity with uh, wikis was um, acute. Uh, I wanted an innovative website that reflected my abilities. Um, I had used MediaWiki Media Wiki quite extensively at my own business, um, not only internally but externally. We have uh, a, a wiki at wiki.xmission.com um, where we put up uh, how to use the internet, how to use our services, um, but we also do policy and procedure internally on a wiki. Um, but I'm also a very big fan of transparency. I think transparency is a solution to, to many governmental problems. And I wanted to be transparent in my website as well. Uh, it was, I also thought it would be good for organizing volunteers and information. And so I thought, why not put policy up there as well? And this was kind of a crazy idea for a lot of um, politicians at the time. If you go to my webpage at p-down.org and look at the wiki, you'll see over 50 topics of policy for discussion. Um, that's unusual on a political website. So I started that, that campaign wiki. I installed it in August of 2005. It was completely open. Uh, there was no restrictions on who could edit it. Um, unfortunately, in, at the end of 2005, over the Christmas break, um, some vandals hit the wiki. And as fast as I could revert, they would vandalize. And I would really love to show you some of the images they put up on my wiki. But after uh, the benevolent dictator session yesterday, I decided against that. Um, so I moved it to registration at that point, um, but then after the, the, my campaign website got slash dotted, 
Um, more vandals came in, they would register, and then they'd start vandalizing. Um, so I moved to registration with editor permissions. Uh, the stats from the wiki, there's 301 registered users, 146 users with edits, 4,817 total edits, 13 average edits per page with 185 pages. Uh, it's been available since 2005, but after I lost the election in 2006, there was very little activity at all on it. And even after I redeclared in 2011, the activity kind of stayed flat. So um, one of the things that I, I firmly believe is that you really need a, a critical mass to get there. Um, the top pages on the wiki, are the main page, the talk on the main page, uh, the advertising page, which is a, a place where people strategized about advertising, what to do, um, the to-do list, opposition research, and then you finally get into the um, topics, and the number one topic that people look at is abortion, uh, and the help, and then taxation. So, like I said, critical mass is essential for a vibrant and effective policy discussion. If it's just you and some friends, it's really hard to get that flow going back and forth. And it's, it's, I'm sure you all recognize that as um, Wikipedia participants, that the more people you have participating, the better it works. I've heard that over and over at this conference, that we need more volunteers. It's the same for a small wiki. Um, I want to give you an example of one policy discussion. This was um, one of the most contentious issues in 2006, what to do in Iraq. And what really opened my eyes to the power of the wiki was an anonymous person coming in while uh, the wiki was still open, and they posted this. Uh, the answer to Iraq is simple. Let the Iraqis vote on how long they want U.S. to stay, then do what they say. If they say, get out in 60 days and the military has a mission, if they say stay, then there is a mandate. Um, now, whether you agree with that or not, I want to present why that's interesting to me. Because you, on one side, you have the left saying, withdrawal immediately, move $700 billion of military budget into education, infrastructure, science, and debt reduction. That's something I sympathize with. And then on the, on the right, you have stay in Iraq, invade Iran, and the rest of the Mideast convert the leaders to Christianity. <laughs> you have the two viewpoints, and trying to find the in-between is what happened on my wiki. Democracy in Iraq is the excuse, and use democracy to get yeah. an answer. Um, you could call this a compromise. And if, uh, for those of you who follow U.S. politics, you see very little of that compromise happening right now. It advances the debate forward. Number two rule is collaboration does not make your voice louder. You have to be prepared to compromise. In the policy discussion, there's 51 current topics. Uh, the wiki highlights obfuscation and evasion. So if somebody asks me something and I say, I'm going to revert that because I don't want to answer it, suddenly it's apparent that I reverted it. So I have to answer those questions. Um, I think rhetoric falls to the bottom. It's, it's um, something that you have to have a fact-based discussion on a wiki, and people are getting on there and just saying, you know, we need to do this, we need to do this because that, and not backing up with facts really doesn't rise to the top, like facts. Um, armies of idiots fall to single truths. <laughs> and it defines and prepares a candidate. Um, I felt like when I got into politics that I had a very rough outline of, about what I believed on a number of topics. But debating those and discussing those issues on the wiki um, made me a much better candidate and made me better to go into debates. In fact, my first debate with Senator Hatch, um, he, had, he drew the short straw and had to go first, and the first question was on Iraq. And he got up there and he talked about how, well, we're going to fight them over there so we don't fight them here, and uh, this is a, a battle against terrorism, and all the typical lines that politicians give about a topic like that. I was able to walk in and talk about the issue and the, the nuances of the issue because I'd heard from people all over the spectrum that gave me their viewpoint. Uh, number three, your privacy is your own, but no policy topic is off the table. I don't think um, anyone during my run asked a question that was personal about my family, about my personal life. It was all about policy discussion. Um, if, if they had asked a personal question, people would understand if I had decided not to answer it. Um, I think the strategy, although we tried to do it on the wiki, is the weakest link. 
um, effective campaigns, unfortunately, are closed. Uh, you can't win at poker by showing your hand. Um, and inexperience does not equal expertise. So you ask a, a bunch of people to come into your website and tell me how to win this race, um, everyone's going to have an opinion. But if they've actually done it, which in, for Democrats in Utah is a rarity, um, th they don't have expertise in how to do it. Wiki strategy tends to be hand-waving with no execution. So you get somebody on there that has a grand idea about uh, what direction you should take the campaign in. You know, maybe you should go out and give away uh, free computers, or you should have a geek squad going town to town. It's very hard to execute something like that just based on somebody's idea. So number three, and this is um, something I have experience in as well, innovation does not win elections on its own. Even though I had a very advanced, innovative campaign, even though I had a very robust website, in 2006, the core reason I felt like I did not win was money. Um, in 2012, I felt like the core reason I did not win in, in a convention was politics. It had very little to do with how good of a website I had. Uh, nobody intentionally copies failure. If, if uh, I've been disappointed because I haven't seen any other politicians pick up and put wikis on their own websites. Um, they, I feel like they haven't done that because I did not win. If I had won, everyone would have done it. Everyone would, every politician in the United States would have done that because I would have won a major race with that idea. Uh, government needs elected officials who understand technology and transparency. I think a lot of the people in this room and a lot of people at this conference sympathize with that idea. And that's why I got involved. Uh, the primary reason American elections are won is money. So I'm asking you to take this idea and either run <laughs> yourselves, really believe me, anyone can do it, um, and if you don't want to, help somebody. Take your expertise and, and make a candidate better. Um, the SOPA PIPA protests got the attention of the U.S. government, um, but we need people on the inside desperately. This is a, a saying I like saying, uh, change is quick, but progress is slow. So if you're ever frustrated with uh, the, the awareness people have of technology in the government, just remember it's changing. Thank you. And this is my email address, my Twitter. My yeah. Um, Facebook around, uh, around 2006 was not allowing um, the general public in. It was just, I, I, do, I did make extensive use of Facebook. Um, and the return on it is, is kind of mixed. I mean, the, the great thing about Facebook is being a politician, I was getting people across the spectrum friending me. I mean, I've got 4,000 some odd friends. Um, and I would use that by putting out bulletins about my race and everything, but again, it wasn't a winning factor. Yeah? Uh, why not run for state office first? Um, I was focused on federal issues. I mean, copyright, the Internet, things that the, the federal government is consistently looking at and regulating on um, were of my greatest concern, and that's why I focused on that. Um, I'm not a ladder climber. Um, unlike most politicians, I enjoy my job. I enjoy what I'm doing now, um, and so if I was going to make an impact, I decided to make an impact in the area I, I felt I could make the most impact. Um, that said, I don't know if I'm ever going to do it again. Uh, what has happened in Utah is it's an enormous wall for a Democrat to win in Utah, and what I feel like the Democrats have done in Utah is put another wall in front of that and put Constantine wire on the top and just made it all the more difficult to win um, on some of the principles I want to win on. Have you thought that maybe, because um, politicians, particularly at the federal level, deal with many issues, any issues that cross the state plate, have you thought that perhaps maybe, you know, your emphasis on these particular issues as opposed to more general widespread may have uh, been part of it? Again, you emphasize there's technical issues like copyright and the Internet, whereas, you know, legislators go home. My, my race in 2006 was motivated um, initially by the issues of uh, digital privacy, copyright, Internet, all the things um, people on the Internet hold dear. Um, but I found quickly that over a period of time um, that was not a major issue for everyone else. What I did find was a major issue was accountability, was transparency. 
the dysfunction of the system in Washington. And when I ran again in 2012, I ran on the idea that we, that all of the evils in Washington, all the problems in Washington come down to the influence of money and that we need to get money out of the system. And I stood up and I said, I'm not going to take PAC money. And yeah. I think, <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm not going to take PAC money and we need uh, a constitutional amendment for public financing in this country. My opponent stood up and said, I am going to take PAC money. I am going to do whatever I can to beat that individual. And the electorate thought that that was more appealing. So um, I, I, I recognize it's a small issue, but I was running on the larger issues of the dysfunction of government. Yeah. If you look at the discussion on, on my Wikipedia page about me, uh, you'll see me saying, I don't think it's right for me to edit my own page. Could somebody help me out with some of these corrections? So I did put that up to the community. Um, there was another individual, um, both, both on my Wikipedia page and the Wikipedia page about X, X mission. Um, I, I turned to people in the community and asked them to make those edits. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, yeah, I, I would love to see some challenge to the existing parties. Um, it's just so difficult because I've seen so many attempts. I mean, one of uh, Teddy Roosevelt's um, great failures was the uh, Bull Moose Party. And you're talking about a former president trying to push a progressive party forward in the United States and failing. I think it's extremely difficult to break the two-party mold in the United States. Um, but. I feel like they're getting to the point where they're going to slit their own throats at some point, and, and it's just got to happen for change to move forward. Yeah? Uh, this is not a question, actually. It's just an idea. Uh, a member of parliament from our Democratic Party in Italy uh, just started a, an initiative on Twitter, which is called Open Parliament. Mm. I mean, he started tweeting live from the, you know, from, the, from the parliament what they are discussing about. And then all the members of parliament started tweeting about the, the works on the parliament live. So can, can you think, uh, do you think that that would be an idea for you know, Utah or for the federal um, Congress? You, may you probably suggest this idea to your party? A lot of our representatives um, already do use Twitter to a, a large extent. Um, I could see a lot more happening as far as e-Congress goes. Um, I think there is a lot of antiquated ideas in the United States government, um, like the electoral system, the uh, electoral college, um, the, the idea that people need to go to Washington to represent their districts when we have telephone lines and the internet and everything else. Um, I would love to see those ideas advance forward, but again, it, it, it's a problem of getting aware people in the Congress to make those changes, because I don't think the, they're going to make it on their own. So you think, uh, actually, you, you don't think they even want to, to tweet about what they're working no. on? No, I think they. I think they would rather have. Um, you know, one of the thing, one of the things I advocate and I still advocate for is having a calendar, showing people who you're meeting with, um, showing people who uh, the the lobbyists who come to your office on a daily basis, and then recording those meetings and putting them putting them up. Um, there were people. Yeah, there are there are a few representatives who do that, but I have seen a few representatives do that and then quit, because it wasn't uh, an advantage to them from where the money was coming from. Yeah, two more. Yeah, you've been very patient. No, the, the guy here in front, yeah. Uh, so um, given what you've learned about using your wiki, what do you think of the relative merits of keeping that system versus using a more traditional, more structured, safer method? <clears throat> I think the wiki sorts things out. Um, like I said, the, the facts rise to the top and they become prominent. On a message board, it's all too easy for a fact to get lost several pages in. Um, although discussion is important, I think uh, a wiki is um, another one of those tools. I think um, some of the things like, uh, I think it's the liquid democracy that they're doing in Germany, where you um, put in an idea and people vote it up or down. Uh, I mentioned in one of the other sessions here that um, when President Obama did his first E-Town Hall meeting, and he had people submit them over the, inter the questions over the internet, and the number one thing that rose to the top was um, 
marijuana legalization, and he kind of, he mocked that. He said, you know, this is from the internet. <laughs> you know, it's a legitimate question, and, and politicians need to respect that. The problem is right now they don't. Um, but I see w the wiki as being one of the, most, one of the most powerful of a set of tools that a politician can use. Uh, you, <laughs> you were first. Um, I did an IAMI, IAMA uh, the day before convention, so you might want to go back and check that out. I, we take one more, right? Uh, I, I thought you had a, a great point about uh, compromise and uh, you know the, the importance of that, uh, and uh, uh, along with along the lines of the earlier comment, uh, it it seems like in in the U.S. that that the the two-party system is, is kind of a, an obstacle to that, and it's it's really structured as you as you were saying around money. Uh, it isn't the the solution to that uh, really uh, to take Wikipedia principles, neutral point of view, that's logical conclusion, and uh, seek to enforce a nonpartisan system. I, I I appreciate that you're a Democrat by by background. But right. Um, I think that would be. Now, the, maybe today's the formation of the Wikipedia party. Right? Well, but that would be a party. Yeah, I don't know. The, the problem is, is I don't. George, the, the, George, George, George Washington the lamented. The examples that have failed, the, as, yeah. as you mentioned, have been just one more party, whether it's you know, Ross Perot's Reform Party, the Bull Moose, it's been over, over and over. And over again. Um, George Washington lamented the creation of political parties. And, um, and actually, several other presidents have. And without some sort of um, constitutional convention, it, I think it would be difficult to take parties completely out of the process. Um, people want to flock to um, collections and, and groups that believe the same as they do, and that they feel like they have more power in that way, and they're right. Um, so trying to take parties out of the political process in, in the United States, it's a great idea, but I don't think it's going to happen in my lifetime. But if you've got any ideas about how we can do it, let me know. Yeah, well, American, we'll see how, what impact that has on this race this year, but it hasn't had much so far. Thank you. My name is Jan. Jan I'm, uh, I come from the German Wikimedia chapter. And I have to apologize for my rather rusty voice today. If you like to get rid of a German, just use air condition. Uh, the idea of this talk is to reassess our current advocacy practices and thereby giving you a small insight in concrete chapter work, what we are actually doing. And for those who have attended the chapter conference back in April in Berlin, they might be reminded because some portions of the presentation um, derived from a very interesting session we had over there. So. Imagine a world without clumsily drafted legislation. And of course, it doesn't exist. Like the keynote speaker of the last Wikimania back in Haifa, Jochai Wenkler, reminded us, for almost 20 years, the copyright industries have pushed hard against weak opposition and extended the scope, reach, and aggressive enforcement of copyright to contain network, network te technology and resist network culture. So, as a result of this, we had some kind of polit political efforts to regulate the internet in the last couple of months. And I, in my perspective, they set a new tone. So, either if it's um, a national bill like SOPA and PIPA, or a multilateral um, trade agreement like ACTA and, and CETA, there are certain goals, I think, uh, cling to these kind of efforts. If you aim to fight infringing material, this means you like to police content, and you like to police user-contributed content as well. If you like to empower rights owners like the, uh, the copyright industries, like Hollywood or the, uh, the record companies, you nearly automatically enhance the risks of lit uh, lit litigation. If you like to make law enforcement more effective, 
you sometimes undermine your process because you place the burden of proof if an action is legal or illegal to the distributor of content. And if uh, rights holders are constantly making claims and sometimes claim rights they d don't have it actually, you abandon the culture of sharing or there's a, a certain threat for the, for the culture of sharing. And especially in the case of ACTA and SETA will um, I think they will, uh, it will contain some portions of the infamous uh, internet chapter of actor. If you apply loose definitions about what is right and what is wrong, you create a chilling effect and this in the end might lead to a, a more author retention in the case of Wikipedia. So there are serious threats coming from uh, different sources. And the overall effect of this is you have a regime of uh, uncertainty because you don't know anymore which is right, which is wrong, which is legal or illegal. So what would Wikipedians do against it? They just drop the H-bomb straight away. Then they look smart, smart and innocent. I think Liam just left the room. <laughs> Has anybody seen this? It was amazing. It was Liam Wyatt, aka Wittilama, speaking for 20 minutes on the Australian television, explaining SOPA. It was amazing. So they tried to look innocent, but they jubilate. Yeah, we did it. Showed some muscle. We won. But in the end, what happens when, what happens when the party is over? And speaking from a German background, I can tell you that some things got worse. There were conservative politics um, placing Wikipedia near platforms like Mega Upload, who do copyright infringement on a regular basis. And so they blamed Wikipedia being one of these platforms who foster infringement. And so I thought, yeah, maybe we still don't have the vocabulary. What is free knowledge? To them, free knowledge means like, it's piracy to them. Sounds similar. And of course, the, um, the, the SOPA incident created a, a huge uh, media coverage and um, it was overall positive, but in the end it just helps to refine the next legislation. Then, uh, so it's just um, not a real, it's, it's winning battle, battle losing a war actually. And um, like Jimmy Wales reminded us, you cannot call for strike any time. You just um, annoyed by something. So it's a um, sensitive thing. It's a sensitive si thing to to think about blackouts and um, to think about how we, as a community, are like to succeed. Yeah. Uh, like the legislative headache, or what uh, you're referring to? No, this is my, these are my thoughts. My my thoughts. So, um, so maybe maybe the Big Bang, the Big Bang theory, the black the blackout, is not the only way to get hurt. Maybe there are alternatives, and I like to sketch some alternative, which is uh, the strategy of crowdsourcing. <laughs> <coughs> I knew you like it. <laughs> I knew you liked it. So this is a, a rather hybrid uh, strategy because being Germans, we are so stubborn that we think that lobbying is like social engineering. You have a handbook and you have certain steps and you will succeed. So this is the proper, the proper advocacy business, lobbying. Yeah, you have to monitor legislative affairs and you have to get in contact with members of parliament directly with parties and you have to uh, build up alliances, and networks, you have to be visible, accountable. And this is what, what we are doing. But this, uh, there's another part of crowdsourcing because we are not only stubborn Germans, but nasty Germans because advocacy is good clean fun too. And there are some strategies we might, might be la rather guerrilla tactics. So 10 things you can do. This is the engineering aspect, be gentle. This is what we do on a regular basis. Um, 
every time if there's an election on the federal level or on the state level, we uh, publish like pre-election questionnaires about issues of copyright, um, the education system, uh, data security, open access politics, um, stuff like that. And we do it together with the uh, local community, so we have like a better version published on the website, and we ask for commentaries, and we pick up the best commentaries. And so we send these kind of questionnaires to the parties. And in fact, we are torturing them, because these are like 30 questions, and it's really hard to, 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 to get the, the, the human resources to respond to all these questions. But in the end, it leads to um, an, an awareness, awareness on, on behalf of the parties, which issues are at stake for the Wikimedia movement. And on the other hand, we can publish it on the website. And so there's, um, there's a little help for Wikimedians, Wikipedians to choose the party to vote. We don't give them advice whom to vote. But if you search all the answers, which are published in, um, on Meta, you will get a, get, you will get a hint. So be gentle, or don't be evil. So mix, yeah, you, have to, you have to go for the big guys. Um, um, according to uh, unofficial stats, um, Google invests like $30 million a year for lobbying, for professional lobbying. And then in Berlin, they invest uh, like uh, $6 million for building up an, uh, um, a center for advanced studies on questions of the internet, regulation of the internet. And um, they, in, they introduced something like a multi-stakeholder platform, which is called Collaboratory, which is some kind of a think tank. And they launched even um, a campaigning uh, platforms. And so this kind of uh, Google surrounding, in the German case, gives um, place to um, to meet um, people from the economy, people from politics, people from civil society. So make friends before you need them. This is the rule number one for advocacy. And uh, as you might know, might you know there are Frank and Thurman from the um, Wikimedia Foundation and the rest of the people. These are members of the study commission the German Study Commission on Internet and Digital Society, which is um, um, a continuous uh, platform to, uh, to examine uh, the next uh, legislative steps. And these are maybe these are the Pete, uh, Pete Ashdowns from, from Germany. These are really progressive, uh, progressive politicians, a conservative, uh, a socialist, a green one, a liberal one, conservative one, a social democrat. And um, unfortunately, they don't have the maximum impact uh, in their own parties. But of course, it's a good thing to have um, to, 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 to be in contact with them directly. So make friends or make noise. This is poor me freezing to death during the actor protests in Berlin. I think it was even in Fahrenheit, it was below the zero in, in February, and there was this uh, kind of impressive um, presentation uh, by the, the Polish uh, colleague about how it all started. And there were like uh, 10,000 people gathering, freezing to death. And uh, there was a nice moment when I, um, I claimed like independence for the whole Wikimedia movement when I asked to the crowd, uh, do you think that uh, Wikipedia has a problem with copyright? And the whole crowd was answering, yes! <laughs> and I said, no, no. <laughs> we try to obey the rules, always. <laughs> so, um, but of course, these are, these are traditional, traditional uh, things you can do. You can go on, on the street. You can surf on a shitstorm. In, in the aftermath of SOPA, German politicians were like I, like I mentioned before, they, they put Wikipedia side by side to, um, to mega upload and money-grabbing internet criminals. And so the, I, this was, I mean, this was outrageous somehow. And um, of course, you can, uh, you can use, the, like, we, like we saw, you can use the social media to um, create um, um, a short hype cycle. But as it was mentioned in the, in the first talk, you should... Uh, you should never, ever uh, insult some, uh, someone personally. Or you could serve a pirate. This is banned. 
It's a nice bloke. Doesn't have any clue about pod copyright. It's a problem. <laughs> because Bernd is the chairman of the German Pirate Party. Who has heard about the Pirate Party? Oh, okay. So as you know, they were founded in Sweden. And they are crushing into German par uh, parliaments at the moment um, on, the f on the state level. So they, uh, they gain like uh, between 8 and 10% of, of, the, of the whole vote. So they, uh, at the moment they have, um, have an impact and they share some of our basic values and um, uh, like transparency, like participation, collaboration. And um, uh, the good thing is about them, these are pure amateurs. They are, don't have any professional, uh, sometimes they don't, ha they have a professional experience, mostly with an IT background, but they don't have any political experience. And so it's a nice, uh, nice, um, uh, nice interaction with them because we, 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 we like to teach them, educate them about free licenses and um, the whole system, uh, the Wikimedia uh, uh, projects are working. Yeah, you can slate them. In the case of, of Actor, of course, there was a lot of public um, criticism. And so the, um, the biggest, uh, the biggest um, uh, German news show, they have an, like an online platform. And they asked us to, to do an, a commentary, uh, commentary against Actor. And of course, we were happy to do so. Um, but on the other hand, and I think it's the better strategy, you can just educate them. So um, two months ago, we published. Um, uh, I think it's a 24 pages booklet about the whole process of actor and the possible chilling effect um, uh, for open content projects. But uh, as you know, um, um, actor is uh, being abolished by the European uh, Parliament. But that doesn't mean that the questions raised by, uh, uh, by actor um, uh, will, will go simply away. Write it off. So this is a nice and complicated chapter. Um, when the conservative government in Germany came into power, they um, agreed on establishing a new neighboring right for press publishers. So the basic idea behind it was giving um, press publishers a chance to, to get a better revenue sharing with Google. So uh, the proposed bill was, um, was directly aimed at Google. And uh, what happened was that uh, one month ago they uh, they published the draft, the first draft of this law. And um, what happens that actually um, they tr try to create um, a new protecting right for even small text snippets, even uh, succession of words, or even plain text URLs. And this is um, something which is, um, uh, of course, it's not possible in, in proper copyright law. And um, so. There was a lot of discussion going on for the last three years what, where, where this, uh, this bill might eventually lead us to. And um, before the draft was being published, uh, my colleague Matthias from the, from the German chapter, he did some kind of maybe unintended expectation management because he uh, saw some uh, a news show running uh, and the German chancellor was um, giving a small commentary to this particular bill. And um, it... Um, it, it seemed that she was n not so convinced uh, that, that they would uh, finally implement this law. And so he did a small transcription and the expectation uh, in, the, in, like in the social media were like, okay, so uh, it's good, this law, this law which will have um, uh, dangerous effects on the whole blogosphere, on the social networks, on Twitter, um, will not come eventually. But a few years, a uh, few weeks uh, after, um, they published the draft, and so um, uh, compared to the expectations, uh, the outra outrage was was even what was higher. What I would say. So you can write something off, and you can write software. The um, German Wikipedia Magnus Manske, when he heard about this law. He was coding in between 24 hours. He was uh, coding a uh, no software, who ha um, like a Chrome extension, who has basically the effect of extracting plain text and snippets uh, from an URL. So the the part above would be illegal. Um, uh, the part um, um, uh, below would be illegal, uh, or would be um, you 
as, as a third part, you would, have, you would have to license these texts, or you would get sued for infringement. Um, but um, in, in the, part, uh, the part above, um, it would be um, like fair use uh, in, the, in a similar way to, to, to America. So um, sometimes, of course, the technical strategy um, is, uh, is, um, is serving your, your interests. So this is a bit disappointing because um, professional observers, they say about loving, if you have to pick the winning team, at least in Washington, pick them with the deep pockets and great lobbyists. And like we heard in several talks before, we, I think we, will, uh, we, won't, um, we won't do this and we uh, will search for another path. Um, and so I think a little hope comes again from our friend Jochai Benkler, who says, Wikipedia represents a moral force that no commercial site can ever hope to replicate. And so I would say, let's make the best out of it. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Okay. <laughs> so that's the problem, and that's why we decided to be so, you know, aggressive, aggr aggr aggressive in, in our decision. That's why I'm, I'm uh, probably, yeah, you're right, that when we got some, some uh, you know, the, the entries for voting, uh, what the, 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 uh, the, the conductor is saying, when they are uh, trying to issue some new copyright law, but it's just But just uh, let me, um, um, but if, it's, uh, if, we, if we agree on that, that it might be the ultimate ratio. So what would be in, this, in the next, next case? Uh, a, a, simil a similar threat through la law would be intro introduced. I know, so I, would, I, know, I uh, totally agree with you. Yeah. Uh, Probably we 
it in a window just think about Sunday, you know, next Sunday. Really, you know, it, I, I mean this. I know that you're right about it. We probably uh, already reached the, the, the final solution. Mm -hmm. We have no more solution, more, you know, more destructive solution. But still, we don't yeah. solve this. Yeah. There was the guy behind you. Yes, you first. Okay. Um, actually, you mentioned what the uh, you know the Russian was accused of using that you know that as a factor for why they built the Bulk of Nuclear Weapon. If you have any anything to say about it, the Russian use of Russian Bulk of Nuclear Weapon. Um, as far as I know, the the Russian blackout has a, has a, a completely different background, because the law draws on uh, on child pornography and and it's about censorship. And I think uh, the whole uh, SOPA thing and the whole ACTA thing is about copyright infringement, which is which has some kind of secondary or effects or let's say collateral damages on the whole project. So it's a different case, and maybe the solution might be quite the same or the reaction. It's a completely different case. No, so and yeah, no, I tried. I tried a few. <laughs> I, I, I tried to use the Google Translator for the Russian <laughs> page on the r Russian Wikipedia, but it wasn't wasn't working so well. <laughs> yeah. Hey, um, you could try a partial blackout and just get into a critical region of the clock, and if you just follow that all the way out, you'll have bullet points <laughs> for your book. Roughly, I could try that. You know, really need to go through yeah, to realize you know it. which ones are blocked, so yeah, I mean, it's just a way to subtract their attention. Probably the one that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, and we will we will put like rather, let's say, political content on the front page as well. Um, not on the front page of Wikipedia, but on the front page of the chapter. Yeah. So, uh, so of course there are possibilities to do something on a on a lower scale. Uh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Yes, I would say so. I would say so because we are not. We are um, it's it's not always about resources. It's about it's about the communicating and networking, and um, I mean. I think the, 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 the Italian guys and, and me, we never, never met before, and we never talked about these things, but uh, I think we should start on the European level because what actually happens is that we have to react to national law implemented according to European directive. So we <laughs> should start to fight the European directive. But this happens in Brussels, and there's no, there's no, um, there's no chapter, there's no strong chapter uh, there over there. And so this could be a new step, but um, this is no, this is a controversial uh, this is a controversial thing. But because of of course you need the feedback structures to the Wikipedian community. You cannot just um, leave them behind somehow. So th so maybe maybe this gives us the chance to build up something really new and kind of uh, organizational network together with uh, different NGOs like Open Knowledge Foundation, Communia. Um, um, EFF yeah. uh, stuff like that, and and just to to go back, come just to um, uh, talk and think about our common strategies, because together we're stronger. So you have like no objection against Wikipedia kind of shifting towards like a social activism role? No, I I think um, it's my personal opinion. My personal opinion is that um, um, the the and uh, at, the, at the moment we will face um, several peepers, actors, all the time uh, for the next years. This is, this is the, this, the plot, plot thickens. It's about the copyright wars in the crucial um, stage. And so we have to prepare. And it's not about money, not, not always about money. Of course, if you hire, if, 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 I'm not a professional a lobbyist, so, but if you hire someone, it will, um, I mean, these guys, they earn like half a million dollars a year, so it's impossible. So, uh, there, there's some, someone, okay. two more, okay. POV, POV, difficult. But one good, the good thing about Wikipedia is that it gives you really much information about these proposed bills and laws. You will never find this kind of information in the newspapers. So ACTA, ACTA was a black box to professional journalism that didn't have any clue. And you had, you had to search your information in the blogosphere. Okay. <laughs> Heiser. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Last one. Yeah, and I, I think it's what I said during the talk, and that we still lack the vocabulary. I think the main task, maybe for the, like the employees of the chapters, the main task is to, to tell the public what it is at stake. What are the concrete threats to free knowledge? And, and so maybe we can, um, yeah, maybe we can um, stay in contact and, and talk about these kind of. Uh, of issues, and uh, you can reach me via Twitter and by email. And I'd like to um, to have this conversation. Go oh, Pete Ashen, of course. Uh, Let me make one suggestion. Yeah. Um, if you want more advocacy that has power, yeah. maybe you should be advocating for people who agree with you. Hmm. So having each, you know, if if, if yeah. Wikimedia is going to get politically active, have a set of candidates that you're endorsing. Yeah.
wicked politicians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much.